Hi, my name is Daniel Moses, and this is my entry into the What's in Your Box 2017 Challenge. Uh, sorry if the quality isn't that great. I currently only have access to a webcam, and I just realized that tonight is the deadline for the contest. So anyway, here goes. Uh, I live in Baltimore, Maryland uh, with my wife and one-year-old daughter. Um, I work part-time for a company called Air Photon. Or we're a small high-tech startup. We make our own um, weather surveying equipment. So we have a couple of engineers on staff who do all the design. And I work as a technician, so I basically do component assembly um, and small parts production. Um, my main job function there is to run the CNC, uh, make sure it doesn't blow itself up, uh, things of that nature. Now, I wasn't hired because I have any sort of experience or um, education in that field. I don't. I didn't go to school for engineering or anything like that. Um, although in retrospect, I wish I did. <laughs> um, that definitely would have made me have a lot more knowledge in this area. Um, but anyway, I was hired. I, as far as I can tell, I was hired because the owner saw in me a desire to learn and an extreme interest in working with my hands and making things from scratch. Um, that kind of thing is always called to me, and I really enjoy that sort of field. Um, so, um, I guess he thought I was good for the job and I learned very quickly and, you know, I've been working there for over a year now and, um, haven't had any complaints, <laughs> so that's good. Um, I really like the job. Um, so a little bit about my background. Um, like I said, I don't have any formal training in engineering or anything like that. Um, I actually went to school for accounting. Um, you know, growing up in the society that I did. Um, it was kind of expected. I, I don't know if expected is the right word, but it was just the norm, I guess, for uh, people to go into accounting or law or, you know, being a doctor or something like that. So I guess something more white collar was just considered the norm. And so I never even considered a quote unquote blue collar job or, you know, working with my hands is something I can do um, for a living. Um, just never crossed my radar. Um, so I guess if you had asked me a couple of years ago what a machinist did or what machinists were, I would have just told you that the only thing I know about machinists is that it's the name of a Christian Bale movie. That's it. I never heard of it. Didn't know what they were. I knew that people did woodworking, but that wasn't something that ever crossed my mind as something that I would do. Um, so I guess really it all started when um, I got engaged and I wanted to do something special for my wife. And I don't know why this popped into my head, but I thought it'd be really cool to make a gazebo from scratch. And I had no experience. I never used power tools in my life. And it's like, hey, if other people can do it, why can't I? Um, so I looked it up online, and it turns out it wasn't that complicated. And, you know, I did make a perfect gazebo, but without any skills whatsoever, I think I did a pretty good job of it. Um, so after that, I just was hooked. You know, I got to make everything with my hands now. I got to make things from scratch. I got to learn how to do things. Um, I, in spending the past several years, all my free time is spent um, just soaking up information, watching YouTube videos, people like Jimmy Dresta, you know, who can do anything with anything. Um, those kind of things call to me, um, and I just find them fascinating and amazing. Um, so, anyway, um, as I started watching more more and more YouTube videos, I found more and more channels were recommended to me, and I eventually stumbled, stumbled on, I believe it was Keith Rucker's uh, YouTube channel, and that just blew me away, the fact that you can make parts from metal. Like, you know, I just thought, like, metal is something you get from a company, and the companies make it however they do, and didn't know anything about it, and just like, that's what it is, and that's what you have, and you can't edit it, quote-unquote, in, in any way, and that's just the reality. And the fact that a person in his own house can take a tool and shape metal to his whim and make it into anything. That would just blew me away. Like, that's amazing. I got to do this. Um, so I haven't, I didn't yet at that point have the ability to do so, but I was like, I got to learn as much as I can about this. So I started buying books on the subject. I started watching all the other YouTube channels like Tom Lipton, uh, Keith Fenner, um, A-Bomb, um, Tubal Cain, you know, all these guys they all bring their own unique take on the subject and just amazing to me. Um, so 
I started learning more and more about it. I was like, I got to get into this. I got to do this myself. So a couple of years ago, I started buying tools on Craigslist um, with the hopes that eventually I would have a place of my own to use them. Um, so I've been storing these tools in a shed that I built in my in-law's backyard. Um, I don't have my own property. We uh, rent. So, you know, my in-laws have like a nice size property in their, in their backyard. So they let me use some of it. Um, so I've been buying up tools, mostly woodworking tools, because metalworking tools, you know, like a, a mill and a lathe tend to be on the bigger side. So I don't have anywhere to store those yet. So I haven't yet bought them, but I do plan on it eventually. Um, so at some point, my in-laws agreed, my wife agreed, <laughs> more importantly, to allow me to use their property and use dig into our savings to build my own 24 by 24 workshop um, so that I can do this not not necessarily full time at first, but definitely in my part, spare time to uh, develop my skills and use them to my fullest advantage. Um, so I actually just started construction last week um, on this workshop. I bought all the materials. They're all sitting out. We had a slab poured um, about a month and a half ago. And, you know, I just started construction and I hope to be finished by New Year's and have my own uh, workshop. Um, that I can move into right away with all these tools that I have and then eventually buy a mill and a lathe and all the other metal working tools that I'll need. Um, so that's all besides the point. Um, you know, I obviously really excited about this kind of thing and I want to do these things, but the, my dream job, the thing I really want to do the most is to learn these skills so that I can teach them to the children in my community. Children who otherwise would never, never hear what a machinist is you know, never learn about it, never understand that you can, quote unquote, bend the world to your whim and and make things with your own hands that you could be proud of. You know, kids in my in my neighborhood, my area, you don't we don't get taught that kind of stuff. We don't learn about this concept that you can make things from scratch and take take pride in quality craftsmanship. That just doesn't exist. You know, people are completely okay with buying something from IKEA, and not only not only being okay with the quality of IKEA, quote unquote, you know, but also paying somebody to put it together instead of just figuring out figuring out the instructions and how to put it together themselves. That's like even like a step up for people in my area. Um, so I really, really, really want to teach children in my area how to uh, use tools regardless of whether they're metalworking or woodworking, I want to teach them that, you know, you don't have to be afraid of a table saw. You just have to understand what it is, what it does, and um, how to use it best. I want these kids to see that there's alternatives to the classic jobs. Classic, you know. Um, you can take on a job in the trades and be excited about it, be interested in it, and make a living. Um, this kind of idea excites me, and you know, I, I've in my head been <laughs> developing some sort of curriculum. I, there are a couple of schools in the area that I feel would really like to have somebody on staff who could develop a curriculum that would allow children to not only get knowledge but also get hands-on experience. Um, and so, that's what I really, really want to do with this. Um, my dream, dream job, like if I ever got this far, would be to have some sort of museum like what Keith Rucker has. Um, I know it's not his museum, but, you know, some a museum like that where you have these vintage tools that display the ingenuity of people from the bygone era, people who had to make do with what they had and yet managed to come up with incredibly elegant solutions. Um, that kind of thing just excites me to no end, and I want, to, I want people to understand that, you know, People figure, people were smart enough to figure out what to do without, you know, a computer. People had used their own brains, and it was amazing. Their own hands. And you can too. There's no reason why not if you just put your mind to it. Um, so for me, if I were to get this box of tools, not only would I use it for myself to develop my own skills, but I would love to demonstrate to children, like, this is what a dial indicator is. Do you know how basic it is in its concept and how it works and yet how precise it can be 
Like, isn't that amazing? You know, you can you can measure something within a thousandth of an inch, a ten thousandth of an inch. That's incredible, and yet it works with such a sim relatively simple concept about you know the mechanism behind it. That's that's just mind blowing, and I want children to like be excited about this and say, hey, these are such simple solutions that that blossom into such elegant uh, features. I can do this too, and eventually you know work for the next tech companies and develop their own tools and products that can help shape the world. So again, if, if I were to be honored with um, receiving this box, then I think I could definitely make an impact, not necessarily in the whole world, but at least in my area and my community and the people who I know and the people who I feel like I can really have an effect on. So thank you very much for your consideration.